What's up guys, Craig Mack here, Liberty Bell Beekeeper. So, tonight, still doing spring preparations and my last video I was talking about doing queen rearing and uh, how I was gonna pull that off and I'm looking at grafting this year, pulling some of my good strong survivor queens that made it through two winters uh, and making some more of those. So in order to do that, uh, I'm gonna use the two frame mini mating nukes um, and I'm going to show you how to build them. So this one is a two, D, a two frame deep. Uh, it's all plywood. One inch hole for an entrance. And I guess what they call a migratory lid. So you can get six of these out of one sheet of plywood. Now there's an asterisk to that because in order to get the lids like this, you're going to need an additional piece of plywood, probably like a two by four piece to get the additional uh, cleat pieces, these pieces here for the lids. Now, generally speaking, I like to use one by solid pine for that. I think it helps keep these a little bit straighter, but I'm not overly critical about these lids because I don't use these boxes for very long six or eight weeks maybe um, and I don't mess with them all that much either so the lid to me uh, you know it's not you could use whatever you wanted as a lid you don't need to go buy more plywood you don't even have to make them out of plywood you could cut foam or you could use uh, a core plast or anything really uh, I just make them out of the plywood because I figured out how to get them out of this sheet with needing just a minimal amount of extra material. So, let me show you how that works. Now, I have these all cut and laid out. I'm making about a dozen more of these for this season to add to the 20 that I have. And I'm going to be raising somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 queens, 30 to 40 queens at a time. Uh, and doing the grafting, I'm going to try to replicate that process as well. So, I have a full sheet of plywood laid out here as a table, and I have all my cuts on that full sheet of plywood. So you can see that you can get every single piece, barring that little bit that you need for the lids, depending on the choice you make for the lids, out of this one sheet. All of the boxes I build out of plywood, it's the same exact process for any size. The cuts are the same. Now what I mean by that is the process of getting the material you need out of this sheet of plywood is the same across all those sides. Let me elaborate. So, you're gonna make six rips, in this case, at 10 and a quarter. That's for a deep, a deep box. Out of each one of those rips, you can see you're going to get your four side pieces. So each rip represents the four sides of the box. Two are cut to 19 and 5 eighths, and then the two end cuts are cut to nine and a half by three and a half. Okay, so each one of those rips, one, two, three, four, five, six, represents the four sides needed for the box. Now the next six rips, one, two, three, four, five, six, at five inches will be your tops and your bottoms. You'll also get a small piece, excuse me, a small piece on the end, which will represent and which will be used for your frame rest cleats. Uh, these pieces right here. Okay? So again, six rips at ten and a quarter. That gives you all the material you need for your four sides. Six rips at five inches will give you the material that you need for your tops, your bottoms, and your cleats. Now you end up with a small rip on the end, a couple of inches wide, that you could use for your cleats. And you could save these pieces um, and cut them uh, like in half and make the cleats for your lids. Uh, you know, make these pieces here, but you're still going to be short. You won't get all of it out of here. 
Now, you could probably find this material somewhere and make it work for you. But, uh, you know, uh, scrap material is kind of easy to come by. You can find three-quarter inch scrap wood a lot around job sites, job site dumpsters. A lot of guys, you know, they throw cuts away and, and you're able to go and get them uh, and they'll give them to you. Um, so that is the, that is the layout for the two frame mini nukes. Now, like I said, the process doesn't change if I'm building five frames or eight frames or 10 frames out of plywood. It's the same exact order of cuts. Your first several cuts will be your sides. Your next several cuts will be your tops and your bottoms. And then your extra piece will be all your utility pieces like your cleats. You know, these end, end pieces you'll get will be, uh, you know, you'll always get those and you'll be able to use those for your cleats. But the same process is this, it, it goes for all those boxes. You're ripping your side panels first, then your tops and your bottoms, and then all your cleats. I do it this way because I want the grain of this plywood running vertically when I set these boxes up. So when this gets built, my grain runs vertical. I think that helps. I think it helps with weathering, uh, and I also think it helps with keeping the boards straight, eliminating warping, um, and delamination. Obviously, areas like this, you want to make sure that they're sealed really well, whether it's paint or stain and sealer or whatever it is that you're using. Make sure that that material is, is really, you know, those kind of areas are really sealed. You'll get that on the cheaper plywood. The nicer plywood doesn't have it. What, what they call a cabinet grade plywood just does not have that because it's made with nicer wood from further inside of the tree. Okay, now I was going to put one of these together in front of you, but I don't think that's entirely necessary. I can explain it to you right here. Usually I'll start with my fronts and a side piece. I'll staple those together. That staple didn't sink. Sometimes they don't staple, they don't sink all the way, and you just got to hammer them in. So I'll start with these two pieces, and I'll put those, put those together. You can see they're square at the bottom. That's why I like this hole. If you were to make a complete entrance across the front of this, you need to put some kind of spacer in there to, to make that. I don't need that with just drilling a hole in these. So I just saved myself an extra step by just making these full and drilling that hole. So I'll put those two pieces together. Then the side piece, other side piece goes on. Make sure you got a nice flat surface to put it in. Then I'll spin that box around and I'll attach my other my other front or back piece, depending on which, which I'm assembling at the time. Then, normally I'll go and I'll put my bottom piece on. That's the complete width and length of the box, and I'll staple that together, and that just squares up everything uh, to, the, to that bottom board, gets it nice and square. Then I'll add my cleats, drill my hole, and then put my lids together. Now, I've made these lids a couple of different ways. Uh, I, I have made them telescopic with, uh, you know, a rail all the way around. They stay nice and straight, and then I wrap it with billboard vinyl, and it works great. I do this with all of my lids. Um, the only ones I haven't done it with will be these. And I still might wrap them, but I'm not sure. I haven't decided. I don't use these things all that long. I'm not sure how much more work I want to put into them uh, if I don't have to. And there it is. Two-frame mini nuke works amazing for uh, for raising, raising queens. They do great things for making increases. Uh, 2019 was my first year with my own bees. I went from zero colonies to over 30 by using these. I only used 10 of them that year, but I also ca caught swarms and I did some cutout work. So I had the availability to get a lot more bees from outside sources, not just from my own bee yard. Um, last year I built another 10, I went with 20. I did 20 splits right off the start of the year and made an increase from 19 at the beginning of the year to over 60 by the end of the summer. 
Um, I'm hoping I come through, you know, come through the winter with, you know, 30 plus. I'd be thrilled with. If it's more, great. If it's less, oh well, I'll get more bees. Not worried about getting bees. I, I plenty of ways to get bees. Um, but these things work really, really well for queen rearing. Just simple. It's really nice to be able to drop deep frames in there. Walkaway splits, fantastic. These work great for walkaway splits. Drop two frames in, walk away for five weeks, four weeks, and come back to a newly mated queen and hopefully newly mated queen and, an, and another colony for you to, to, to pull resources from. Another queen on hand that you could save or sell. Um, and a lot of times if you do a walkaway split and you get in there to right, at the right time, you can take queen cells from the many that they'll make and, and divide even further. So there's plenty of opportunities to make great increases with these. Um, my specific purpose this year is for more queen rearing. So there it is. I'll put the cut list up in the description or it's on the video somewhere. I haven't made it yet. Um, uh, so that way you could screenshot it or, or take it. I might even put it on my website and then you could download the PDF from there. But there it is, two frame mini nukes. I love them, they work great. They're really good, really economical. I mean, to get six of these out of one sheet of plywood, now material prices are going up, folks. Woodenware is going, going to get expensive. Uh, at almost $50 a sheet, this is still the cheapest way to get the most amount of uh, of bee boxes. Um, you got to build them yourself, but it's still the cheapest way. Um, I do it and, and it's worked great for me. The bees do not care about this plywood. Only beekeepers care about plywood, in my opinion. They haven't had any problems. I cut them and get them built early, so any of the off gas that's happening with it happens long before the bees ever get close to it. So, uh, there it is. Two frame mini nukes. Go and get yourself some. Like this video, subscribe. If you want, if not, no big deal. Keep on watching. I'll be making more later.